This is a topic I care deeply about. I believe it's fundamental to the survival and future well-being of our technological ecosystem. And of course, it's not just UTUX who feels this way. A significant, and I'd say enlightened, portion of the open source world is beginning to ask crucial questions about the future of the open source model and its potential for growth. Let's look at the evolution of technology, from the birth of the internet, to the Linux kernel, to the global spread of networks and free software. Open source has been the backbone, the foundational infrastructure upon which everything has been built. Just to name one example, the HTTP protocol is open source. But I could go on for an entire hour, and maybe I will in a dedicated video, showing clearly that the modern world literally runs on open source. Open code is the technological standard at every level. But here's the paradox. Around this shared and free infrastructure, private giants have grown. Corporations that today dominate the world of computing, the internet, media, and telecommunications. And they do it by building on top of software and projects born in the open source world. What our ecosystem missed is a key step, the entrepreneurial one. We failed to transform, or better yet, to integrate the values of community and sharing into a model that's also economically sustainable. Yes, there was Red Hat, but that was an exception. Companies have one goal, profit. They're structured to conquer the market. Meanwhile, an open source community follows different logics, often incompatible with pure market dynamics. And that's fine with me. What's not fine is the total inability to be clear-headed and demand that those who live off our work, because that's what it is, contribute in a serious and proportionate way. And I assure you, the political and economic dynamics behind all of this are far more complex and twisted than they appear. Often, our enemies are already inside the house. Take the Redis case. The story of its creator, Salvatore Sanfilippo, struck me deeply. He dedicated his life to the project, turned down million-dollar offers, chose to remain in Sicily instead of moving to Silicon Valley. He donated his work to the community, allowing dozens of companies, Amazon included, to use it for free. He even granted the use of the Redis name freely. And then we have content creators who refuse to release their materials under Creative Commons, who showcase free software just to farm views, adding a little comment on top. What are we even talking about? San Filippo's story is unique. Redis became a standard, possibly the most popular database in the world, used everywhere. And that's exactly why when he decided to change the license to protect his project from systematic exploitation by big tech, I applauded him. He found a way to say, use it freely if you're an individual, but if you're a company making money with it, pay. That's a smart and pragmatic position. We can't keep growing in some magical land of pink unicorns. We need numbers, resources, strategy. But the thing that truly made me jump out of my seat wasn't the Redis fork, Valky. A fork is fine, it's legitimate, part of the game. No, the unacceptable part is that the Linux Foundation openly supported this fork, now used by Amazon and all the usual suspects who were already exploiting Redis. The Linux Foundation chose to back those exploiting the project, not its original creator. And here we need to open a serious parenthesis on the Linux Foundation, because it's no longer the community-oriented organization many still believe it to be. Founded in 2000 with noble intentions, it has now become something very different. Its governance is increasingly shaped by its biggest donors. Google pours in millions every year, Microsoft the same, Amazon is among the top sponsors, and so on. Meta, IBM, Intel, Huawei. These aren't just donors. They sit on the board, they participate in key decisions, they shape strategy. The Linux Foundation currently manages over 750 open source projects, an immense treasure. But the question is, in whose interest? When the Foundation chooses to support a fork like Valky rather than protect an innovator like San Filippo, is it truly serving the open source community or the companies funding it? The answer is clear if you look at the numbers. The foundation receives hundreds of millions from big tech, but how much of that money goes directly to the individual developers who build the software? Very little. Most of it goes to infrastructure, events, marketing, and management salaries. It's become a bureaucratic machine that exists mainly to legitimize the current technological status quo. So here's the uncomfortable question. 
Does the Linux Foundation actually serve to protect open source or just to maintain the status quo for big tech? Google, Microsoft, Amazon, AWS, Meta, IBM, Intel, Huawei, TechCrunch donate $500,000 each per year. The entire elite of global tech power donate an average less than the 0.002% of the annual profit. The very entities who feed daily off our work, our passion, our community. But don't forget, we are open source. When you report a bug, help on a forum, make a video, promote a project, you are part of this community. This is a common good. It belongs to all of us. And don't tell me Linus Torvalds is untouchable. Torvalds has done a lot, but he's not a god. And most importantly, he doesn't actually manage the Linux Foundation. The kernel is one thing. The power behind the governance is another. Today, the Linux Foundation is a smokescreen, a facade that big companies use to keep our ecosystem under control. Our structures, like the OSI, are outdated, and perhaps it's finally time to demand a real paradigm shift. We need a clause in every open source license. If you use this software for commercial purposes, if you profit from it, you must contribute. I'm not talking about huge sums, just 0.15% of your revenue. Maybe startups are exempt for the first few years. It's all logical, reasonable, unlike what we're doing now. So how can we implement a fair commercial license? The solution isn't as complicated as it seems. We could create a dual license, completely free for personal, educational, and nonprofit use, but with a required contribution from companies that exceed a certain revenue threshold. Imagine a license that says, use this software freely, but if your company earns over 10 million euros a year using it, Contribute 0.15% of the revenue generated thanks to this software. This isn't science fiction. Some companies already do this voluntarily. Elastic, MongoDB, Confluent, they've all adopted similar licenses to protect their core projects. And it works. Small developers and startups still use the software freely, while big corporations finally start paying for what they use. The revenue collection could be handled by a new organization, truly independent that redistributes the funds directly to project maintainers. Total transparency, democratic governance, no big tech influence, a model that finally puts creators, not exploiters, at the center. Sure, there would be resistance. Companies currently benefiting from free software won't be happy. But if the entire open source community moved together, if we created a shared standard, they would have to comply. Because without us, Without our work, their infrastructures would collapse in days. The future of open source is in our hands. We can either continue to be exploited, hiding behind purest ideals that keep us poor, or we can grow up, mature, and demand the respect we deserve. Free software should not mean underpaid developers and corporations growing rich off our backs. I stand with Salvatore Sanfil and I say thank you, because his decision shows us the way. A difficult road, but a just one, and most importantly, a grown-up one.